ever lost a pawn or wish you had a chess set, that was Elves vs. Goblins. Today I'm going to show you four ways to make custom game pieces. Designing from scratch, converting downloaded models, scanning and remixing, and even using AI. And we're going to 3D print each one of them. I'm Brian Delicka and this is Maker Build It and today I'm showing you how to make customized 3D printed game pieces. Before we get into the four ways of how to make them, you need to keep one thing in mind, how to keep the game pieces cohesive so everything looks like it fits together for that actual game, such as Monopoly. You want to have a same base family cohesive heights and readable shapes. So it looks like a real set, not just a random pile of 3D prints. This goes for if you're adding one piece to your Monopoly set, creating a set of custom uh, pieces for an entire game, or even creating your own board game. Meeples. Meeples are what the pieces are called uh, on these games that represent you or the other players and it stands for me or people right and it's just brought together in one term a little odd i never knew it until i started doing some research on board game pieces but that is what people call these little characters first things first though we're gonna need to figure out the common size of the pieces in a given board game for instance checkers in a checker set is always a given size or the pawn in a given chess set are always the same size. So we're gonna need to figure out what those are before we're able to make custom game pieces. For Monopoly, we're gonna look at sort of the minimum and the maximum of each game piece in order to make sure it will fit in the play within the board itself. One of the things you can do if you're creating your own board or set of characters is you can sort of create a style guide that uh, has all the details of a given game. And what I'll do is I'll create a style guide for these Monopoly pieces. That way you're able to know what's the min and max you could have, and you'll be able to download that at makerbuilder.com. If you're really interested, I'll put the link in the description below, but that will actually let you be able to build your own pieces, let's say for a Monopoly set. Now let's get everything measured for these games and then we'll start customizing. So we're gonna take our digital calipers from Fowler and we're going to measure our game pieces. And we got some special game pieces, one of the classic Monopoly pieces. And if you haven't seen them, they're pretty cool. They're actually wooden. We're gonna start with our checker and chess pieces. So we're just gonna take one of our checker pieces and we're gonna see how big it is. It's about 29, a little under 30 millimeters, and see how thick it is. It's about eight millimeters. Now we're gonna be working with our pawns. So let's figure out the widest part at the bottom. It is about 18 millimeters and the height is right there. Okay, it's about 35 millimeters, almost 36. There we go. Now we could measure all of these chess pieces if we're gonna create all of them, but right now we're only gonna be working with the pawns for this project. Now let's measure our Monopoly pieces. What we're gonna do here is because the Monopoly pieces are very different sizes, we're just tr gonna try to get a general measurement of them. And we're gonna just look at the biggest ones and the widest ones. And we're gonna try to get our dimensions so we can see what our minimum is and what our maximum is in length, width, and height. So we got quite a few. And this is where it's really cool. You see there's so many different types of Monopoly pieces that this is where you can really have fun customizing and making your own Monopoly set using the standard Monopoly board. So it looks like the dinosaur is probably the longest piece. So let's take, let's roughly take the width of that, where I should say the depth. The depth of that is roughly about 38 millimeters. 
Let's see which piece is the tallest. It may just be our dinosaur all around. The penguin looks slightly taller. Okay, the penguin is our tallest. So let's just measure our penguin. So our height is going to be about 20 millimeters. And the widest piece looks like the top hat. So let's see how wide the top hat is. And that's 16. So that's going to give us the parameters of our max. It looks like the smallest piece is this battleship in terms of width. So let's see the width on that. It's pretty narrow. That's only six millimeters. Um, the smallest height looks like it is the hat. So the hat height is eight millimeters. And the smallest depth looks like this cat. Or is it the duck? It's the duck, actually. And that is roughly about 17 millimeters. So this is a classic set. And you can see here, it is really, really old, really beat up. I got it at a garage sale a long time ago. And you see, these pieces are much... Oh, I just lost one. Thank you. These pieces are much, much, much different in size and style. The houses are the same, but look at the dice. Look at the old dice. How cool are those? Um, the money you can see is really worn. This was a really loved, loved game. And if anyone actually knows Marilyn Ware, this was, a, I'm assuming, was originally their game. They wrote their name on it multiple times. It looks like over the years they were working on the handwriting. But as you can see here, look at the size difference in the wooden pieces. You can see their, their diameter at the bottom looks pretty standard, which is roughly about 15 millimeters. But the height on these, this is the biggest piece by far. The height on these is almost 40 millimeters. So that's a pretty, pretty tall game piece in comparison to the traditional pieces. So here's the chart of all the Monopoly pieces in terms of the minimums and the maximums. If you want to download this chart, it'll be available for download on makerbuildit.com. And I'll put the link in the description below. So when you're designing your own pieces, you're going to want to use some 3D modeling software, such as Nomad Sculpt, Blender. Uh, you can even use Tinkercad. It depends on what type of pieces you want. We're going to use Nomad Sculpt, and we're going to actually create some custom game pieces for one of these games. Now let's get going. And we're going to work on one of the checker pieces. First, we need to go in and let's just delete our spear because we do not need that. We're going to add in a cylinder and we're going to resize it real quick. So the radius is 30. And our height is going to be and that's pretty much the size of our checker. Now, we could design something on top of this. We could put our name on there. We could put anything. But what we're going to do is we're going to add to the scene one of the things we've already made, the sword we made, into the scene. So now, these are all the pieces of the sword. So let's just real quick voxel remesh them. That way, they're one piece. And let's move the sword up. We can see it's very, very tiny. So we're going to have to scale this up quite large to fit on top of the checker. So this checker is going to have this little sword embossed on it. That's going to be our customization, which I think looks pretty cool. Let's just get that nice and even. Okay, now that we have that done, what we need to do is we need to make another one of these um, cylinders. So what we're going to do is we're just going to clone this 
and then we're just gonna move it up on top of this. And now the reason why we wanna do that is we need to make sure that we are doing this cutout. So when, with checkers, when you king something, it stays together. We're gonna also clone the spear. Now the spear is sitting in the same place at this point. So let's bring this one all the way down. So these are touching. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our second cylinder we're gonna make this invisible. We're gonna select that. And now we're gonna do a voxel remesh. Now, as you can see, we have the negative imprint under the cylinder. Now we're gonna grab our other sword. We're gonna move it straight up and through. And now we have our sword on the second. checker. Now we get rid of this cylinder and now we have our checker with the emboss on the bottom and the sword on the top. So now we're just going to voxel remesh this. Now let's export this and get it printed. So our checker pieces are done and, and as you can see on one side they have the emboss of the sword and on the other side they have the negative. Now they didn't quite fit the way I wanted two together. I probably needed to make the negative piece a little bit uh, bigger, slightly increase it, maybe a couple of percents, and they would have snapped together a little bit better in terms of when you're playing checkers and you're kinging a piece. But overall, they look pretty good. Now let's look at how you could download and convert some models that already exist into game pieces. Now, if a model already exists, it's pretty easy to convert it for one of these games. Um, you may just need to add a base or something like that to it, but you'll be able to easily convert it to play uh, in a Monopoly set. But one of the things you want to think about is the licensing. If it's just for personal use, you're probably pretty clear, but always look at the licensing wherever you download it from. If it's in the Creative Commons, for instance, or if there is like no monetization, you're always going to want to be respectful of licensing. Now, one of the things you're going to need to do is make sure you toughen up any pieces because these designs weren't necessarily made to be game pieces. So they may have parts that are a little too thin uh, if you're going to be um, playing with those pieces all the time over and over again. So you may need to toughen up or thicken some of the pieces in your 3D modeling software. How cool would it be to make some Hobbit themed pieces, especially from the 1977 cartoon? And we found some files on Thingiverse for Bilbo as well as Gandalf. Let's just get these in our slicer, get them sized up and printed. So we're going to use this Amerilabs TGM7 tabletop gaming resin for the prints for the ones we downloaded online for our game pieces. It's sort of amazing how easy these supports come off with this resin. These look really amazing. As you can see, Bilbo is the correct size for Monopoly, where Gandalf is a great size for our chess set. So remember to always scale your model to the correct size for your board and be respectful of the licenses if you're downloading and remixing someone else's model. Now the next thing we're going to look at is scanning something that already exists and turning that into a game piece. And this is really good if you wanted uh, some consistency and some customization of things that already exist around your house. For instance, if you want to do a Monopoly game that had the theme of items from your Meemaw's kitchen. Now you can scan this in multiple ways. Some phones have 3D scanning capability in them, but you could also use a 3D scanner, which is what we're going to do today. So we 3D scanned our elephant using the Creality Ferret Pro. We had done the scan a little bit earlier, but it was super simple in order to make that piece. You can see the file looks actually really nice. There are a few holes in it, but we're gonna use the software to um, block up the holes. And then we're gonna get this elephant printed. The elephant came out actually really nice for a Monopoly piece. As you can see here, the elephant is roughly about a little bit shorter in length than the T-Rex. 
and it's about the same width as the hat. Um, it is a little bit taller, but this will fit really nicely on our Monopoly board. Now, the last way to get some customized pieces is to use AI. Now, let's start with ChatGPT. So I asked Chat to make a goblin illustration. From there, I asked it to make a black and white rendering with some bump maps or some grayscale height maps in order to create some uh, detail to it. So the AI that's going to render the 3D models could actually have a better reference. Then what I did is I just brought it over to Maker Lab and I uploaded my 3D illustration and let it run and let it create my 3D file, which I actually think looks really great. Then all I needed to do is bring it into my Bamboo Lab Slicer and print my model. The AI uh, to 3D model actually worked out pretty well. Like I said earlier, when we tried to make it Monopoly size, we did have some issues where the legs were a little too thin and it broke. But when we made it about the size of a pawn, you can see it's a little bit taller, maybe the size of like a knight. But when we made it uh, chest size, it worked out pretty well. Obviously, when we had a bigger model, it worked out really well. But always remember to shore up your model so you don't wind up with broken pieces. Obviously, this is a little too fragile. We had to glue it. We also printed our goblin in resin, and I'll leave it to you to <laughs> look at the detail and the difference between a resin and an FDM print. After you've generated something you like, use the same playbook to keep regenerating models in the same style. That will create some consistency for your gameplay. I hope those four ways help you create some custom game pieces. So to create consistency and things looking professional, create one base family, one sort of height range for your pieces within a given game, and consistent placement, for instance, where they are on a base. Round sharp edges for younger players and avoid small pieces that could easily break off. And if you really wanted to get fancy, you could create your own print tray to hold your custom pieces that you've created for your games. Drop your favorite games in the comments below and maybe I'll create some base blanks for it that you could use for your own 3D modeling. I'm also going to create a more detailed video on generating 3D models from AI, so make sure you also comment below if you would like to see that. For more on 3D printing, DIY, and maker projects, make sure you like and follow Maker Build It, and remember, keep on making.